All right, Ernie, thank you very much, and we welcome you to Denver, where the Thunder have struck impressively, capturing the first three games against the Nuggets. Game one, Kevin Durant, a career playoff high, 41 points. And then in game two, OKC never trailed. James Harden came off the bench to score 18 in an easy victory. And then on Saturday, the Thunder got a career performance from Serge Ibaka, which stood a late, furious Nuggets rally to win game three. And now with their backs to the wall, Denver tries to live another day as we welcome you to game four of this Western Conference first round series. And welcome to the Pepsi Center, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, and rest assured, we will be hearing plenty from the czar, Mike Fratello tonight. Pam Oliver is here as well. And right now, let's bring you up to date with the starting lineup for tonight's game. For the visiting Thunder, Durant and Westbrook are the top scoring tandem in the playoffs thus far. And looking at the Denver Nuggets starting lineup, Aaron Aflalo, after missing two games with a hamstring injury, returning, got off to a hot start, and the Nuggets will need his shooting. So we're set to go for game number four. Nuggets trying to avoid a sweep. But the Thunder have had their number. They have beaten the Nuggets five times in the last 18 days. And we'll see if it's just a matchup problem for the Denver Nuggets. The officials tonight are Greg Willard, Ron Garrison, and Michael Smith. We'll look to see if OKC can come out early and score quickly against the Nuggets. It's been something that seemed to happen in each of the first three games. And the big question is, where is the scoring going to come for the Nuggets, who are the top scoring team in the NBA in the regular season? Lawson and Aflalo in the backcourt. And here is Aflalo, off the mark, off the side of the backboard. And the first possession for the Thunder. Go back to game number one, when Denver started out making their first seven shots of the game, seven for seven. And since that time, it's been basically brick city for the Nuggets. Capacity crowd here at the Pepsi Center. So they have not abandoned their team, Nuggets. And now the first shot by Durant and the follow-up missing by Ibaka. No score, nearly a minute gone by in the opening stanza. Martin looking inside for Nene. Nene was the leading scorer in game one with 22 for Denver. And that's the guy that George Carl would love to see get off early, get Nene involved in the game. Westbrook misses, Martin clears. Both teams have combined 0 for 5, and Lawson, goaltending is called, and credit Ty Lawson with the field goal. Goaltending called inside. You see the transition opportunity. Lawson puts it on the glass. He Once he puts it on the glass, you cannot block it. You can take it to the glass, but you can't block it after it's touched the glass. Lawson with 20 points in game two is the leading scorer for the Nuggets. Cephalosha defended by Lawson outside. And here is Ibaka hitting from outside. Serge Ibaka with 22 points, matching his career high. And, of course, his playoff high as well. And he had 16 rebounds in game three, and that was the best he's ever had in postseason. And there is the bounce inside off the hands of Lawson. And here come the Thunder from the baseline. And the shot is missed by Cephalosha. 2-2 two, to two, score, nearly two minutes gone by. Aflalo. Martin wide open. Kenyon Martin. And back in game number one, if you remember, it was a close game all the way down the stretch, and one of the big keys were the big people were making jump shots for the Denver Nuggets. A couple by Martin, a couple by Anderson, one or two by Nene, and all helped to chip in to make it a very close game. And as the series has gone on, uh, Mike, it looks like the size and the length of Oklahoma City has been too tough for the Nuggets. Durant missing from the perimeter, and the rebound by Aflalo. Aflalo getting off to a good start in his return in game three, hitting his first three shots. Two of them were three-pointers, and this time out of bounds, and it was last touched by Oklahoma City, so the Nuggets keep the ball. Yeah, and you talked about the length of the Oklahoma City team. Well, it's a team right now that has the Denver Nuggets 
shooting just 42% from the floor in the first three games. And in fact, uh, the Thunder winning despite shooting 36% themselves in game three. You don't often see that. Gallinari. Here's Nene from outside. So far, with the exception of the medium jumper by Martin, all of the shots by the Nuggets outside have been way off target. Zephalosha trying to run Lawson into a screen. Perkins against Nene. Foul. And Nene picking up the personal, and Perkins will go to the line. You see Perkins get to a point where he brings the ball up through the arms of the defender. He actually initiates the contact, but since Nene's arms were extended, it winds up being a foul on Nene. Watch right at the end how Perkins brings it up through the arm of Nene. There, Nene reaching out. Simple call for the official. Perkins had 11 rebounds in the second game of the series. Hasn't scored much, but he certainly has been a presence down low for Oklahoma City. They missed the first free throw. Thunder have been an 80% free throw shooting team in the first three games. Perkins gives them a disposition. He gives them an attitude. It starts at the defensive end. It starts in practice with them, walkthroughs in the morning, and he carries it through. And the rest of the young players on their team figure, hey, this is a guy of championship caliber. We should listen to what he says. He won with the Celtics. Misses both free throws, however, and the Nuggets maintain the two-point lead. Aplalo looking for Nene inside. Has good position down low against Perkins. Gets a piece of it. And here come the Thunder. And Westbrook fouled as he hits the jumper. So Oklahoma City, the number two team in the league in block shots, block one there and come back and get a chance to tie the game. Most times it's a weak side defender that comes and winds up getting the block shot. So Perkins was head up on the nay that time, but it was Ibaka coming over from the weak side. That was his support, and he's the guy that elevated to get up there and get a piece of that. Westbrook with 23 in the last game, and he has been 19 of 22 from the line coming in. Here you see him drop step, and there's Ibaka coming over late to protect the basket. Last game, four block shots for Ibaka. Russell Westbrook making his first all-star appearance in his hometown of L.A. One out of two. And now he is 20 of 24 from the line in the series. Nuggets up by one. Gallinari has his shot blocked by Ibaka. Into the hands of Westbrook. He has Cephalosha on the right. Takes it himself. Changes hands and gets the lay-in. And the Thunder lead by one. You can't be afraid to come in and close out a series. That's one thing Scott Brooks told us that he mentioned to his team. And this young Oklahoma City team does not seem to be afraid playing on the road, trying to close it out in four games. Big road win in the last game as Lawson is short with the jumper. And Nene fighting his way gets a new clock. Here is Lawson laying it in as the Thunder just stand around as Lawson gets the lay-in. Well, they're standing because they thought for a second that they were on their way down to play offense in transition, and instead, the ball winds up in Denver's hands, and there is no defense. Durant misses from outside. He's starting the game 0 for 3 from the field. And the Nuggets up by 1. There's the early shooting. And Nene nearly lost it underneath. Martin open. And Kenyon Martin has hit two open baseline jumpers early in this one. Nuggets trying to extend the series as Westbrook is short with the long-range shot, but here's Durant on the follow. And it looks like Oklahoma City is rushing their shots, especially the long-range ones. Here's a follow, lays it in. Aaron Aflalo giving the Nuggets a five-point lead. Well, with the return of Aflalo, what you get is you get somebody who can run in transition, somebody who can shoot from behind the three-point line, and you get a pretty good defender right there. And those last two shots, as you mentioned, not shots that Oklahoma City would be happy about. We've seen Kenya Martin now twice get along the baseline and hit that 18 to 20 foot jump shot. And then a follow getting out in transition, turns the corner, finds an unguarded rim. It's time for Cold Hard Facts presented by Coors Light. 
For Denver, they can't let the two young All-Stars for OKC get off the big games that combine for 72 points in game one. They've got to make their free throws. They missed 12, 9, and 15, respectively, in the first three games. And then during the season, they were the third best three-point shooting team in the NBA at 39%. They've shot 31% in this series from the three-point line. And here is Westbrook driving in and is fouled. And he'll go to the line. And you mentioned... Uh, Durant and Westbrook and what they've done they had their most spectacular effort in game one as you said with 72 points combined so far they are a combined one of seven from the field the foul is against Kenyon Martin and Westbrook shooting again but you know what they haven't had easy shots thus far they've either been challenged or they've taken quick hurried shots not the normal shots they've been used to getting in this series and the free throw breaks the six to nothing streak by the Nuggets. You learn when you're a young team and you're growing up in the playoffs, you learn that it's important to put people away. In your mind, you're saying, we're up 3 nothing. you have the mentality, well, we'll do it tomorrow. It'll happen tomorrow if it doesn't happen during tonight's game. But then all you have to do is think about Kobe Bryant and the foot injury that he got last night, and there may be no tomorrow for your main player if he's injured severely. So you got to end it when you can end it. Here's Gallinari driving in, and Gallinari feeding Martin, who's fouled, and you can add Derrick Rose to that list as well, as we saw the sprained ankle against uh, the Indiana Pacers, who stayed alive, and so he's day-to-day. -day. Yeah, so Chicago's faced with the decision, depending on how badly he's hurt, do we sit him for the next game, so hopefully he's back for games six and seven if needed, or do we play him with maybe, uh, you know, what, 70-30 injured ankle or 80-20 and, and try and end it back at home? Ibaka committing the foul on Martin, who misses the free throw, and of course it's a, it's a tenuous decision for Tom Thibodeau because you're going, to in, you're going home, and if you lose that game, now it is a 3-2 to two game and going on the road again, maybe getting too close for comfort. Yeah, and then the other team all of a sudden starts to get some confidence, and they feel, you know, let's face it, Indiana felt they could beat him because the first three games in that series were very, very competitive games. Kenyon Martin, who's shown his aggressiveness early with five points, four rebounds, and a nugget lead of 11-7. to seven. Durant finally hits after missing his first four. Kevin Durant, who is averaging 30 points in the playoff second to Dwight Howard of Orlando. If you're the big man guarding that screen, you can't lay back because that's all Durant needs as you see Martin with a little jump hook. He just needs space to elevate. That's like a chippy for him. The big man laid back. He had probably three, four-foot cushions to shoot that mid-range jump shot. Well, what a start for Kenyon Martin in the game that they really need him. And they call it called traveling. Traveling on Perkins, turns it over. Well, the big man trying to decide how he's going to attack his defender. Got it a little bit off the block area. And sometimes you tend to move your feet before you decide to put the ball down. Four-point nugget lead. Raymond Felton is at the scorer's table getting set to come into the game. Interesting, like the three main acquisitions from the Knicks in the Carmelo Anthony trade have not performed all that well in the first three games of this series. And the ball last touched by Oklahoma City. And here comes Raymond Felton, who scored six points on three for nine shooting in the last outing. 16, however, in game two. And see who the substitution's for, Dick. He's coming in for the other point guard. So George Carl electing not to go small this early in the game because they've been hurt in this series every time they've gone small. Oklahoma City's pounded them on the offensive boards. Here is Martin. He's been hot. And misses in the rebound. Taken down by Ibaka, who had 16 off the glass in game three. Westbrook driving in, and the rebound by Martins. Westbrook getting to penetrate early in this game. And defense, and they're going to call the blocking foul against Russell Westbrook on Felton, his first. And you, you know who Westbrook's yelling at right now? He's yelling at his big man, Ibaka. What he's telling him is, when they set a backcourt screen, you've got to come up and yell to me so I know it's here. Right now, Ibaka should be up there yelling right, right, or left, left, so he doesn't get hit with that blind pick right there. It's your big man defensively who's got to be matched up with his man when he steps up in the backcourt. Zephalosha 
guarding a Flalo. Nene working his way in. Pretty move. And Oklahoma City claiming that the Nuggets interfered with the ball on a cylinder. No call there. So the basket will count in the nay with his first field goal. Dick, let me go back to that one I said that Westbrook was yelling at Ibaka. It's yelling meaning teammates communicating with each other. Somebody might take it the wrong way, say, oh, those two guys got a problem. No, this is a common thing. You're in this thing to win together. You've got to be able to accept the criticism from your teammate. Cephalosha hitting a three. And that cuts the lead to three. Dick, I see a follow limping down the floor. Let's hope, for Denver's sake, he didn't re-aggravate the injury. George Carl telling us before the game that he felt uh, that a follow was feeling good, but there you see him uh, obviously hobbled somewhat. Meanwhile, the substitutions coming in for Oklahoma City, Nick Collison and James Harden. Those two have been dynamite off the bench for the Thunder in the series. And as George Carl said, Collison might rank in the top five in the league as far as energy. There's a deflection. Here comes Harden, full speed. To Durant. It off. And they're going to call blocking foul on Nene. Nene with his second personal foul on Durant's drive. And so Durant will go to the free throw line. So what does George Carl do now? He's going to bring in Chris Anderson with an A, his starting center with two fouls with just under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Durant makes the first. National coverage of the NBA playoffs continue on NBA TV tomorrow night. Atlanta at Orlando in game five. And the Hawks can wrap it up with a win on the road. TNT Tuesday at 8 o'clock as the Bulls try to beat Indiana as the... Pacers stayed alive. It'll be game five, followed by New Orleans at the Lakers in that series, all even at two apiece. Both free throws are made by Durant. So Anderson is in the game, and Chris Anderson coming off a terrific effort in defeating game three and a three. Speaking of that, by Raymond Felton. Didn't George Call say we could use a few threes <laughs> to go down tonight? That would certainly help out. Shot 29% last time around, and a circus lay-in by Westbrook. Westbrook has been able to penetrate in this first quarter. Here is a follow with a feed to Martin. Kenyon Martin off to a big start, has nine first quarter points for the Nuggets. Approaching three minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Do or die game for Denver. Do they stay alive and send it to a game five in Oklahoma City? Or is it a sweep? Dur Durant hitting a three. And he was left wide open to attempt that three, Mike. If you let him get his feet set and he's squared up, you're in big trouble. He just shoots it too well. You've got to run at him, close out, make him put the ball down on the floor. Lead is won by... Denver, here is Aflalo driving in, and he's fouled. Aflalo playing, and you pointed out he was hobbled a little earlier, coming back from the hamstring pull, and they missed his three-point shooting in the first two games, and the foul is against Collison. Look at Durant. How close is the next defender? We can't even see him in the screen. You know he's going to knock it down. Thunder by one. Speaking to Denver over the course of this series, it is crystal clear they have been extremely frustrated, mad at themselves for what they feel are self-inflicted wounds. The Nuggets do give credit to Oklahoma City for being a good team that presents matchup problems. George Carl wants to see the Nuggets coming out desperate, confident, and ready to give full efforts on both ends of the floor. We've seen that so far, Dick. All right, Pam, thank you very much. And George Carl has had a lot of practice in being down 0-3. This is the fourth time in his coaching career that he has uh, been in a three to nothing hole. 
This is a guy that, uh, as you mentioned many times, had to change the, really the DNA of his team and the coaching change after the trade of Carmelo Anthony to the Knicks, a different team that he had the rest of the way. Yeah, it's not easy to take a, a premier scorer, one of the top two or three scorers year in and year out, and you have your, your, your plays, your end of the game situations are all centered around him. They know where the ball is going, and suddenly you pick up four new guys on your team. You don't have that go-to guy at the end. Things change. And traveling called, Nazi Muhammad, who has just come in the game, called for traveling. Wilson Chandler also checking in for the Nuggets. So it's Felton along with uh, Anderson, Wilson Chandler, Aaron Aflalo, who remains in there, and uh, Kenyon Martin, who's uh, holding on to his uh, right leg as he inbounds it. When you look at the front line of Oklahoma City, their big men give you different things. Bach was so active, offensive rebounds, block shots. Perkins, obviously, the defensive presence. Collison picks up charges all over the place. And then Nazi Mohammed, he's kind of the steady guy on the inside. There's a follow. So he looked like he was hurt, and he remains the one guy in the game for the Denver Nuggets, who now lead 24 to 19. And he probably doesn't want to come out so it doesn't tighten up on him. Here is Westbrook, and since the slow start, Westbrook and Durant have accounted for 14 of the last 17 points for the Thunder. And a three is missed by Westbrook from the corner. Westbrook off to a 2-6 shooting at seven points. Driving in is a follow, and a getting a piece of it was Collison. And the Nuggets give it up to Oklahoma City. Al Harrington coming in for the Denver Nuggets, and Harrington quite quietly has had a, a solid series. Yeah, just because Ibaka's out of there, that doesn't mean Oklahoma can't protect the front of its rim. You see Collison that time up there with Nazi Mohammed right next to him to try and challenge that shot. Harrington has been shooting superbly, especially from threes. And the foul is called against Wilson Chandler. There is uh, Al Harrington who has playoff experience. And Wilson Chandler, who uh, has struggled in the early going for this Denver team. Here is Durant. Makes the first. Don't just listen to NBA talk. See it. Track the Facebook NBA trends and chatter on NBA Playoff Pulse only at NBA.com slash backslash Playoff Pulse. And the cheers of our J.R. Smith. And also for Aaron Aflalo, who gets his first rest of the game. Yeah, and J.R. Smith, George Call relying on the fact that this young man could come in, and he is capable of lighting it up and in a hurry and putting a bunch of points in a very short amount of time on the floor. That's what George Call would like to see. One free throw for Durant, and here is the runner by Felton, and it's taken down by Oklahoma City. And it's going to be... Thunder ball, and you're right about J.R. Smith. In fact, he hit the three with about a minute to go in the third quarter to tie game three at 71 all, and then missed the three that could have put him back in there. And the reason the official called it, you saw the foot there on the line. You can't be out of bounds and then grab the ball. Ball's out of bounds off of you, essentially, so that's why OKC wound up with the ball. Under a minute remaining in this opening quarter, the Nuggets leading by four. Here is Nazi Muhammad using his body for the shot, doesn't go. Nuggets are back with a three on two and off the hands of Harden out of bounds with 45 seconds left and 20 on the shot clock. I saw the effect of Chris Anderson under the basket protecting the rim and he wound up taking Nazi Mohammed's lefty layup attempt and turning it into a distorted shot. The only lead for the Thunder have been five to four early on. Otherwise it's been the Nuggets as Chandler with a good feed inside to Anderson who gets hit in the face. And both teams in the penalty, and for Collison, that is his second personal foul. And Chris Anderson in his ninth year, healthy since late January after a knee and back ailments. And coming off a terrific game in which, Harry, uh, which Anderson scored 13 and had five rebounds. Well, Anderson during the regular season, a 64% shooter from the foul line. They'll take it out on the side, but he's actually shot it very well during the playoffs. And there is J.R. Smith from Anderson. 
The one thing that George Carl was hoping his team would have in this game four was intensity and energy, and they've shown that in this opening quarter. Who determines how much character you have in the players? Do they want to fight? Are they willing to lay it out on the line, knowing that they're down three games to none right now? Double team on Durant. Quick passing. And here's Maynard. And a great save by Anderson, and now the plane for the last shot. Nugget fans on their feet. Harrington misses the three. Final seconds. And it goes! Maynard with the basket. They'll obviously look at this one. Eric Maynor, who had a big game one with a long three, if it goes. That's why you want to keep that ball in front, and you see the red lights around the backcourt. If the red lights are on before the ball leaves his hand, then the basket's no good, and that's what the officials go over and look at right now. We'll let you know. Now for the four coaches corner here with Scott Brooksman. Scott, so far, uh, what do you think of the way your group has played, and is there any particular thing you want to eliminate? Well, we got to do a much better job of cutting off the paint. They're scoring a lot of their baskets around uh, in the paint. That's not good enough. What about the aggression Denver is going, showing so far? You know what? Say that again. What about the aggression that Denver's showing so far? I thought Denver came out ready to play, and we we expected that. Offensively, we have to do a better job. We're trying to force too many things. We got to trust the path and trust our teammates. Appreciate it. Thank you, Pam. Back to you, Dick. All right, Pam. Thank you very much. The officials have waved off the three-point basket by Eric Maynard at the end of the quarter after taking a look at the replay. So it remains 26-20. Red light goes on, ball still in his hands. Clear to see, ball still touching his right hand. Red light is on on the backboard. Good call. Daquan Cook has checked into the game for Oklahoma City, and there is no basket if it's gone, and J.R. Smith is fouled. And the foul is uh, called against Maynard, his first. I think if there's one thing that George Call has to be pleased about, it's his defense in the first quarter. They had him shooting, meaning Oklahoma City, just 33%, and it's the lowest first quarter total that Oklahoma City has had, only 20 points for them in the first quarter. Meanwhile, the Nuggets shooting at 52% as Harrington comes up short from the baseline. There's been no complaints about the Nuggets' defense in the series thus far. Their problems have been on offense as Harden goes in. Good defense inside. Harrington right in the middle of all of it. And here comes Denver leading by six. Anderson with a couple of blocks to help the defense for Denver. And here is Felton. Got inside, couldn't convert. This is the second unit, basically, for Oklahoma City. J.R. Smith gambles, anticipates. He gambled wrong that time. He left Harden open in the corner. And remember, in game number two, Harden, 18 points. A huge second game. And a terrific job, uh, Mike, on his defense, especially against J.R. Smith when they needed it in that last game. Very valuable performer as Felton goes out to Wilson Chandler. Chandler has it knocked away by Daquan Cook into the hands of Maynard, and Maynard is fouled by J.R. Smith. George Carl off the bench. Interesting that earlier in a timeout, what happened with George Carl? Didn't even go into the well, huddle. He went in just briefly, went in there quickly, and then got back out again and turned it over and let his assistants do the rest of the talking. Made his point, exited, stood over on the side, let the assistants talk. Have you done that much? Uh, occasionally you'll do that. They know what your point is. You're not happy with them. There you see the cross-court pass. J.R. gambles, hardens open, hits the three. This Oklahoma City team is a tall, athletic team. They're also long, long in the arms. When they spread their wings out, look at Durant. He almost covers from the lane line over to the sideline when he opens up. You've got guys who are able to get in passing lanes. Denial's right there by Westbrook. And Perkins, he can't see his arm yet how long it is. 
But once his offensive player starts to face up and tries to look at the rim, it's shut down with that long reach of Kendrick Burst. And Encephalosha, arm in the passing lane, steal, it leads to another easy score. Back from game two, we see the effects of the length. Tonight already, three blocks, three steals for Oklahoma City. And you saw Durant on the bench having scored eight points as Maynard misses the first free throw. So for the Thunder, they have uh, Maynard in there with Nazi Muhammad, Nick Collison, James Harden, and Tabo Cephalosha. And uh, the Nuggets with Felton, Anderson, Chandler, Harrington, and Smith. One out of two from the line for Maynard. So you, and for Maynard. So you have a complete second unit being played by Oklahoma City. In the first half, Scott Brooks giving him an opportunity to get out there on the floor in game number four, what could be a closeout game for him. And then the second half, he could always tighten up his rotation if he wants to. Nuggets have struggled offensively later. Here's J.R. Smith firing and hitting. J.R. Smith, who only played six minutes in game two because of sloppy play, said, I don't know if I'm going to be back with his team next year. And George Carl said, hey, you were a minus 17 when you were on the court. That's why you didn't play much. You know, you know, coaches and their assistants always keep these plus-minus charts. What, what does the team do when these players are on the floor? And you see Cook that time out of bounds. He stepped on the sideline. The shot won't count. So the plus-minus chart indicates to the coach how well does the team do when this certain guy is on the floor. George said they were minus 17 with JR. And there you see plus-minus on the floor in this series. And so uh, you don't want to be on that list. That's one thing. You want to be not on the list. You write the pluses. And... Uh, that was the minus story. Felton with nine on the shot clock, picked up by Cephalosha. They go back to Harrington. Harrington driving against Daquan Cook. Got a good first step on it, and following up is Wilson Chandler. Two blocks inside by the Thunder, but they get the new clock through the Denver Nuggets. There's that length again. Chandler driving against Cephalosha. Fall away from the baseline. And out of the pack comes Tabo Cephalosha. Wilson Chandler has really struggled in this series. He seems uncertain at times which shot he wants to shoot, whether he should shoot it or not. And the three missed by Cephalosha, rebound by Smith. And you're right about uh, Wilson Chandler, who was at nine points was his best effort. And fighting inside is Harrington. It'll go the line as Collison returns to the game. And uh, he'll replace Cephalosha. And going to the free throw line is Al Harrington. Harrington in his fifth postseason of his career, last time with Golden State back in the 06 07 campaign. TNT this June. Fear the skies, face the enemy, fight for survival from TNT and DreamWorks Television. Falling Skies series premiere this June on TNT. Thirteen-year veteran Harrington with two free throws. Nuggets up by six. Harrington in game one, if you remember, didn't get as many minutes as he normally does. Then he got almost 26 minutes in game two. It was very productive. And Maynard with a lofted shot in. And it's a four-point lead. Denver Nuggets looking to send this to a game five Wednesday night at Oklahoma City. And the Thunder trying to wrap it up. Chandler with a good feed inside to Harrington. Can't make the reverse lay-in, but gets fouled. Nazi Muhammad with the personal. Talk about a player with uh, a lot of playoff experience. This is his seventh postseason, including uh, a stint with the Spurs back in 2005 and a member of a championship team then. Let's not forget the NCAA title with the Kentucky Wildcats as well. Rick Pitino, the head coach of that team. I think OKC and putting this team together looked down the road and they said, OK, what do we have to do to be able to match up with the defending champions, the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, everybody says what makes the Lakers good is their length. Those three big bodies up front. Well, what they went out and did is they got themselves four guys up front now that can match up with the Lakers. And Perkins and Nazi Muhammad both picked up at the trade deadline to help them in those departments. One free throw, and the Nuggets up by five. Collison finds an opening down the middle and lays it in. Collison saw a free lane 
And it's down to a three-point Denver lead. Ty Lawson checking back in. Here's Wilson Chandler, short, trying to keep it alive with J.R. Smith to no avail. Here's Maynard over Anderson. Tough shot over the taller Chris Anderson. And the lead now down to one with seven and a half to play in the second. Well, Oklahoma City just kind of hangs around. They keep coming at you. Here is Anderson inside. Was tripped up momentarily. No foul call. J.R. Smith into the corner. Here's Lawson for the three. And now the Oklahoma City Thunder looking to take the lead. Haven't had it since five to four. The ball batted out of bounds. And it's last touch by the Nuggets. Number two team in the league in shot blocking at 5.9 a game. Here you see Serge Ibaka come over and help his teammate. Then on the other side, you've got Collison. And then in the end, you've got a group of guys going after the block shot to take away a clean look at the front of the rim. This is an excellent team, and that's why their opponent's field goal percentage is usually down in the low 40s. So on top of all the good things Ibaka did in the last game, also had four blocks. And coming into tonight's play, 10 in the playoffs, tied with Tim Duncan of the Spurs for the lead. This guy's young, Ibaka. He's young, and he just keeps getting better and better, like George Carl said. He's good. And then he said, he's really good. Durant misses from outside. Durant and Westbrook return to the game for the Thunder. Trying to take the lead now. So they got their two stars back in with under seven to play in the half. Aaron Aflalo also back in defending Westbrook. Hits the jumper. And the Thunder have taken the lead by one. Open three for Lawson. Lawson with a three. So lately it's been the Thunder to the tune of eight to one, but Lawson with a big three. And now in the seesaw game, the Nuggets up by a pair. And that's what George Paul would like to see. Push the transition. You see Westbrook lose the ball momentarily. He tries to pull a quick timeout, and he gets it. George Call would like to see the Nuggets push it. And then that three, he loves that three. It's an open three. They passed it up front. They threw it back out. He's standing by himself. The defense couldn't match up. He's got long enough to tee it up and makes it. Keep trusting each other, guys. Keep trusting Dave. That's how you play. That last possession. The first three or four minutes, you're playing like me. That ain't good enough. You don't want to play like me. Play like you, that's good enough. They don't want to play like Scott Brooks, do they? Are. Although Scotty Brooks did play for me <laughs> in Cleveland, and he's oh. a pretty darn good player. Being humble, trying to get his team going. Bad pass by Durant. And here's Harrington. So Lawson, Harrington, Smith, Nene back in the game. Remember, he had two fouls, went out. And Aaron Aflalo round out the five. Harden, good defender on Smith, goes in, gets a piece of it. Coming over was Durant, Ibaka as well. And yet another block. For some reason, they have trouble getting in. Four blocks for Oak City. See, Harden doesn't give up. He comes from behind this head. Meanwhile, you got Ibaka protecting the front of the rim. And you know J.R. Smith knew that his presence was there. Four blocks already, and you still have to go inside. Maybe you'll get the foul. Harrington with the fall away does not drop. And Collison winds up with it. Nuggets lead by two. Collison left open right near the foul line and hits the jumper. And now we're tied at 34. It is our second tie we've had. And that's what makes him so effective, Collison, that he can make that 17-foot jumper. Just like Marc Gasol with Memphis, he, you know, along with Randolph down low, a high-low combination, that's what you have right there when Collison steps up high. Thunder are now out shooting the Nuggets, and there is getting knocked down was Aflalo. Harden for three, out of bounds, and last touched by the Nuggets. And coming back into the game is Kendrick Perkins, the starting center. Perkins didn't score and had two rebounds. And Kenyon Martin also checks in.
Yeah, Martin has a little bit over 10 minutes in the game right now. And this is what happened earlier, maybe the reason why he was out. Watch the knees collide right there. You see the knees colliding. And Martin, in pain, winds up going off the floor to the bench. No basket, and the foul is called against Aflalo. It'll be his first. And that is the second team foul against Denver with 5.02 on the clock here in the second. Westbrook guarded by Raymond Felton, who's replaced Lawson. Setting a screen is Ibaka, Westbrook, and the rebound Martin quickly into the hands of Felton. Felton turns it on, reverse layup, and it tips away. Nuggets back defensively. Westbrook to Durant. Harden, feeding Durant, fouled by Kenyon Martin. Furious play on both sides at one half of the court. Denver needs Kenyon Martin to come back and give him the same energy, same productivity he did when he was on the floor. He scored nine points in ten minutes that he was out there the last time, four or five from the floor. They need him to be big tonight and produce. Second foul on Martin. Durant on the free throw line. Here's a look at the series schedule. There you see uh, the Thunder winning the first three. Next game, if uh, the Nuggets can stay alive, will be Wednesday at Oklahoma City on TNT. And that's all they're thinking about right now, just extending the series. Two free throws by Durant, who has hit five of six from the line. He has gone to the line more than anyone on the Thunder team. And the... Uh, Oklahoma City leading by two. That's their biggest lead as Lawson knocks the ball away after missing the shot. So Lawson and Felton, the two point guards, are in the lineup now for George Carl. And they'll call the foul against Lawson, trying to get a piece of that loose ball, his second. And if there's one thing that Scott Brooks is probably going to talk to his team about at halftime, it's cleaning up their passing. They're throwing too many passes that are either bad decisions. They're late in making the decision to pass it. They're playing sloppy basketball at the offensive end of the floor. Westbrook knocks it off of Martin. And with nine seconds, Thunder maintain possession. Just have to pay a little bit more attention to detail, particularly against a team like Denver, who's good defensively and gets after it a little bit. You wind up throwing bad passes, they'll convert them into easy scores at the other end. Ibaka hitting. Ibaka now with his second field goal, and the Thunder with a 12-3 run in the last four and a half minutes, leading by four. It's their biggest lead they've had. Quieting the crowd at the Pepsi Center, and a capacity crowd it is. Here's Lawson, gives up the three, lays it in. Had a chance for the three, but drove to the basket, and it's down to two. You see Perkins turn around, look at his teammates as if to say, we're not supposed to be giving easy baskets up like that. Keep the ball in front of you if you're guarding the basketball. Talked about how the Thunder want to match up better with the Lakers in what a series it was last year. Really the coming out party for Kevin Durant, even though he was the scoring champ the last two years. Taking the Lakers to six games and a Kendrick Perkins backing his way in there's the presence they want his first points of the game basically just took Nene moved him out of the way and got the shot where he wanted to get it from and Nene lost the ball off his foot and the turnover will give the ball back to Oklahoma City with 3-0-1 remaining and Danilo Gallinari who started the game returns replacing Aflalo who goes out having scored six I think one of the questions all season about Nene, you know, the end of the season is a big year for him contract-wise. He had 22 points, 8 rebounds in game number one. And during the season, if he would have that kind of game, then it would be like three or four more games before he would come back with the same effort. They need more from him. Here is Westbrook with a second effort. Gallinari comes down. And here is Felton driving in. Foul! Basket counts! Raymond Felton with a chance for the three-point play. And the foul is on Durant. It'll be Kevin Durant's first personal. Well, you see the attack mode right there. Take it at the big man. Durant reaches in, tries to deflect it, tries to stop him before he can get it up there. A little too late. I think service in the community means a lot to our organization. 
the fans do so much for us and supporting us. The least that we can do is let them know that we're here and, you know, we care for them. Just because, you know, we play in the NBA uh, doesn't mean we should change as people. You know, we have an opportunity to tell them that we care and show them that we care. I think that means a lot. So I want to continue to just, you know, try to get back and, and try to be the best person I can be. Kevin Durant, who has scored 10 points and the only player in double figures in the game. Five for six from the line, accounting for most as Felton missed the chance for the three-point play, but a new possession for the Nuggets. Here is Nene, and the foul and the penalty for the Thunder, and Nene will go to the line to shoot two. Personal foul is the second on Ibaka. Here is Nene, who has struggled from the free-throw line. This is his first time at the line and as he goes to the stripe let's check in with Ernie Johnson in our studio All right, Ernie, thank you very much. And they misses both free throws, came into the game at 58% from the line and continues to have his problems as he has all year. And there is Perkins, and they're going to call the push. And uh, Nene has picked up his third personal foul. And they asked me, official, how am I supposed to hold my ground when he's backing right through me? And it's the penalty, and so Perkins will shoot a pair. So Nene picks up this third, and Chris Anderson checks in. Now watch, Perkins coming right through the chest of Nene. Nene just not strong enough to hold his ground. When he wraps that arm around and reaches for the deflection, that's where he smacks him with his arm, and that's what the official calls. Neither team shooting that well from the line. 64% for the Thunder, only 55% for the Nuggets. And we've had a lot of those misses from the stripe. As Perkins has one left, he's 0 for 3 right now. Thunder leading 40 to 38. Those are his numbers. Nuggets had a six-point lead, so it's been a tight game throughout. One out of two for Perkins. As we check in with Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, did, despite the close game, frustration building in that last huddle for the Thunder, words were exchanged between Kevin Durant and Russell, Russell Westbrook about some things happening on the floor. They were clearly angry at each other and had to be calmed down by teammates. Got to calm them down, Pam. Those two have to be calmed down. And the field goal by Lawson, who now has 11 points. And uh, Thunder by one with under two minutes to play in the half. And don't think there aren't heated words exchanged in a lot of timeouts, particularly come playoff time. Everybody wants you to execute the game plan the way it was gone through in the shoot-around. We see the little jump at that time by Ibaka from the left-hand side. So that's not unusual for teams, players to get on each other. All they want them to do is make sure they do it the way the coach and the team had gone through it in shoot-around. Here is Lawson out at the top, picked up by Durant. Lawson driving on the taller Durant, leaves it for Martin, and Martin hits again. He's loved the baseline from both sides in this half, Tar. Yeah, and that's where he started out the game, making those couple baseline jumpers, which are so important to getting him out to an early lead. Martin with 11 points and six rebounds. In the first half, he's come up big for the desperate Nuggets who need a win to extend the series. One minute remaining in the first half. And Harden missing the three. Offensive rebound by Ibaka, and he'll go to the line. So that is what the Thunder have been able to do against the Nuggets, get the offensive rebounds, and they do it here. You see the penetration, you bring in the defense, and then Martin goes to that open spot where he's very comfortable along the baseline, shooting that 15 to 17 foot. And remember, Martin's high game was game number one where he had 15 points. Already in this game, he has 11 before the half. In the last game, Mike, uh, it was Oklahoma City with early foul trouble with uh, Perkins, Collison, and Nazi Muhammad. And right now, it's the Nuggets with Martin and the Ney, each with three personal fouls with under a minute to go in the first. So here is Ibaka, and uh, exploding here in the last game. 
22 points and 16 rebounds, matching a career high in both the regular season and the playoffs in points, and a career high playoff in 16 as he's raised the numbers each game. I think I want to go back to what Pam said about the little conversation going on in the huddle between Durant and Westbrook. Remember, you have two young All-Stars. Durant's the leading scorer in the NBA for the second year in a row. He's got only eight field goal attempts. He's two for eight in the first half. Westbrook, in the meantime, has ten field goal attempts. He's three for ten. You can't worry about points and shots attempted. You've got to worry about staying in this game to give yourself a chance. Do it at the defensive end. The offense will come. Youngest team in the playoffs, Chandler. This is the three from the corner. And so a three-point lead and a differential of about 12 seconds here. And here is Westbrook missing the three. Gallinari getting the rebound. And if you wonder why he shot it so quickly, they were trying to get a two-for-one there. Get that one up early, come back and try and get a stop and then get one more possession back. But they're only going to have about four-second differential between the 24-second clock and the game clock. It was a little bit late to shoot a two-for-one. I'd like to see it a little bit earlier than that. Lawson is fouled by Harden. And he'll shoot two. That'll be Harden's first foul. And a chance to narrow the deficit to one. It's been a close game throughout here. And uh, Nuggets leaving no doubt about how intense they're coming out today to try to avoid a sweep. You're going back to that two-for-one situation. If you're going to rush the shot, it makes no sense. Just to rush it and get a bad shot up there and leave only three or four seconds between, okay, your next possession. If it's good one with 34, 35 seconds remaining, then the other team come down. You'll have plenty of time on the way back. Ty Lawson's uh, numbers of the season, the series, and today he had uh, 20 points in game number two and has uh, scored very well against the Thunder throughout the season. The Thunder have won five straight games, and they're going to call the foul inside on Perkins. Technical on Perkins as well. Here is how it happened. Look in the bottom of your screen, the left side, you see Perkins shove Chris Anderson out of the way. Perkins is in the low left lockout spot. Here he just shoves Anderson with his arms. That's where it was called. Perkins had a flagrant one in game number two of the series as Lawson makes the technical free throw to tie the game. As Aaron Aflalo will check back in and Lawson will go out having scored 14 points and the leading score in the game. So here's a follow. You know what Scott Brooks' biggest assi assignment's going to be at halftime? Calm this young team down. Westbrook has a block by Anderson. Anderson with his third block. And 4.2 seconds on the clock and a 20-second timeout. 20-second timeout. Called by the Thunder. Oklahoma City anxious. Westbrook sees the seam, tries to get in there. He beats his man, but Chris Anderson comes over to block it and save it. Just over four seconds remaining. Ball out of bounds underneath for OKC. Anderson, 13 points. Seven of eight from the line. Five rebounds and two blocks in the last game. And good reason why the Thunder are frustrated. Westbrook has missed his last five shots. Durant has not made a basket here in the quarter. And the final seconds out of bounds. It'll be Duggett's ball with 2.5 left. And a 20-second timeout called by George Carl. And so the Nuggets in position to take the lead at halftime. We'll see. And George Carl's Nuggets closing strong here with Lawson three free throws with under 10 seconds to go and now forcing the turnover. Durant with no baskets here in the second quarter and Westbrook missing his last five. Cephalosha is in there with Durant, Daquan Cook. Westbrook and Harden final seconds here's the shot short by Lawson and that'll do it 
So a six-point lead by the Nuggets ends all tied. And after this break, we'll send you to our Atlanta studio for the T-Mobile Halftime Report with Ernie, Kenny, Charles, and Chris Weber. You're watching the 2011 NBA Playoffs on TNT. where the Denver Nuggets trying to stay alive with the Thunder trying to sweep the Nuggets. We're all tied at the half at 45 apiece. Dick Stockton and the Czar, who is praised heavily by the studio group uh, with your comments on the Westbrook uh, and Durant uh, problem in the huddle, and uh, they praised you, and you have a big head as a result of that. But let's talk about the game. <laughs> a very even and close game, it appears. It is. You've gotten the same productivity off of both benches. Denver wins the first quarter, OKC comes back, wins the second quarter, and it's all been dominated with the defensive of both teams. All right, Zar, and right now, it is time for the innovative analysis presented by Exxon Mobil. Offensive philosophy, dribble handoff because they know OKC will switch. Now you have Durant, long, bigger on the small, quick point guard. Sure, Durant will take away his jump shot, now the point guard, Lawson, his job, create, get in the scene, drive penetration. And what happens when he puts the ball on the floor, he's got one defender beat, he's got another two defenders coming over. Now the job of Kenya Martin, spot up along the baseline so my point guard can draw three defenders to the ball and find me for that nice little 17-foot jumper along the baseline. One of George Carl's big point offensively, drive, draw, kick. Underway in the second half, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka, Kendrick per Perkins, and uh, Tabo Sepalosha. And what's ominous for the Nuggets is that despite the fact that Durant and Westbrook are a combined 5 for 20, Oklahoma City still managed a first half tie. And the first shot by Ibaka and uh, Westbrook getting the field goal, and he has 11 now, and the Thunder by two. You know, the people just kind of like made a, a little, ah, oh, that was an unbelievable move that Westbrook just made. He jumped, turned, and tipped it in with his left hand from behind the backboard. And here's Kenyon Martin. Martin, six for seven from the field, ties the game, and Martin with 13 points, one behind Ty Lawson for the scoring lead for the Nuggets. Kevin Durant with 10. The only player in double figures for the Thunder. Gallinari trying to keep Durant at bay. And the pass inside. Ibaka, no basket, and a three-second violation called against the Thunder. Right now, let's take a look at tonight's game summary presented by McDonald's. And uh, the even score is represented in the stats as well. Once again, Denver struggling from the free throw line. Five misses in the first half. Thunder shot to just under 40% and nearly 42% for the Nuggets. Good defensive first half. Gallinari misses the layup. Gallinari also has had his problems. Hey, think about Denver. Tied up 45-45 at the half. They have zero points from Gallinari, only two points from Nene. And there is Kevin Durant, who did not get a field goal in the second quarter, gets one here. Let's check in with Pam. But George Carl told his team at the half to stay solid, stay aggressive, and find some offense. He also said, we need to keep Durant and Westbrook frustrated. And finally, he told them, this will probably be a fourth quarter game, so be ready. Easier said than done as Westbrook gets the field goal on the pass inside. Westbrook now with four points already here in the third quarter with less than two minutes gone by. And that matches the biggest lead for the Thunder. Zephalosha getting the ball to him. Here is a follow. Gallinari fires the three and hits. Danilo Gallinari, who's had a sore Achilles in playing through that. Has his first points of the game. And he barely got that one off before Durant could recover and challenge that shot. And Durant missing the shot. And Durant trying to keep it alive, and he does to Cephalosha. Good hustle by Kevin Durant, forcing the turnover. Cephalosha guarded by Lawson and Martin, and Gallinari comes in. Good defense trapped in the corner by Denver. And Gallinari did a good job defensively that time. Lafalo with the three in transition, in and back out. One-point lead for the Thunder with 
Three minutes gone by here in the third quarter in game four of the best of seven. Oklahoma City would play the winner of the San Antonio Memphis series, and the Memphis Grizzlies have taken a three to one lead over the top seeded team. And we heard Charles Walkley throwing all kinds of bouquets at Chris Wallace, the general manager of Memphis, for the squad that he's put together there with some really nice personnel moves. Lawson feeding the Ney, and a block inside. Ibaka got a piece of that one. A piece of that one. So another block shot. That's the fifth of the game for the Thunder. Here is Westbrook, fouled by Lawson. Great play and great hustle by Durant. And Kevin Durant goes into the crowd, and before he can hit the ground, you got half the bench from OKC up trying to make sure he's okay. He lands, they're up on their feet, running right after him there to make sure. There you see him coming in the picture. Let's make sure he doesn't get hurt. Lawson with his third foul. He joins uh, Martin and Nene with three. And Westbrook, who is three for four from the line, looking for his 14th point in Lawson. Talking things over with Michael Smith on that last call. Thunder winning five games in 18 days from this Denver Nugget team. They were 18 and five against the rest of the league after the Carmelo Anthony deal. But 0 and five against the Thunder. Westbrook has six already here in the third. Thunder by three. And Westbrook pushes Lawson for the personal foul. It'll be his second. There you see the comparison since the trade with the Knicks against the rest of the league. George Carl's team sailed. They were very impressive. But against Oak City, different story. Yeah, well, you can see where the defense of Oklahoma City has really had an effect against Denver. Sometimes teams just don't match up well, and that could be a big issue here in this one. Here's a Flala working against Cephalosha. Cephalosha and trying to stuff it through is Martin. And here comes the break by the Thunder, and it's knocked away, but Durant recovers. And the open jumper by Ibaka doesn't go. Cephalosha just fell down with no one near him, and a block by Ibaka. Here is Nene fouled inside. Ibaka with the block, but the Nuggets not to be denied. And Nene will go to the line. The foul is against Durant, his second. Well, you see, it looks like a wide-open layup. Switches to his left hand. You get the block, and then Nene wrestles it back, and Durant with the foul as Nene tries to go up. So Nene, who is 0 for 2 from the line, Shooting two. Fifty percent free throw shooter makes the first. TNT this June and the turning the courtroom upside down. This much fun should be illegal. Franklin and Bash series premiere Wednesday, June first at nine, eight central only on TNT. Let's face it, when Perkins came here, he was noted as a low post defender. And the effect he's had on Nene right now, just one of five from the floor. He's one of three right now at the free throw line. Only three points for Nene with 17 minutes on the floor. And as you mentioned, uh, his total has dropped 22 in game one to lead the Nuggets, then 16 and 15. And as you point out right now, Nene four. Under seven and a half to play, third quarter. Ibaka has a drop for him. So Serge Ibaka with the field goal. And it's a three-point lead for the Thunder. Ibaka now with 10 points, 11 rebounds, already a double-double, and four block shots. He had a double-double at halftime of game three. Nine on the clock. Here's Lawson with the drive and deflected inside. Followed by Nene. Goes! And the basket counts and the foul. And Nene persistent and relentless under the hoop here in the third. You know, maybe his teammates got to him at halftime and said, look, we need you to give us more. We can't win this game unless you're active on the glass. Get us second shot opportunities, and you've got to put some points on the board. And, you know, 
coming from your teammates, sometimes that's you know, even more important than a coach speaking up. And Czar, when you're giving up length, as the Nuggets are to the Thunder, they need his best play to survive, at least for another game. Misses the chance for the three-point play. You see every time Denver goes to the basket, at the end, whoever it is for Denver is flinching or moving or bringing the ball down because OKC goes up there. They're long and big, and they really protect the front of the rim. Here's Durant. Blocked by Dene. Dene doing it at both ends of the floor. Here is Gallinari with a head of steam going up. And the basket. Offensive foul called. It's on Gallinari. Here's the Ney from behind. The ball winds up going into the rim, and there you see the offensive foul called. The crowd is not real happy with it, but Ibaka held his ground. They got the call they wanted. And you could just tell that Gallinari was headed for a charge from way out. Yeah, because he took off so far <laughs> out. But I, I thought he actually had turned the corner. I would have probably called that a block on the defender. Thunder by one, under six and a half to go. Westbrook in the corner. Ibaka misses, and the rebound, Gallinari. Nuggets trying to regain the lead, and the ball slammed down by Ibaka, but Gallinari is fouled and will go to the line to shoot two, and a chance to put Denver in front. You know, sometimes you wind up making a couple of jump shots in one game, and your mentality is that it carries it over to the next game. So Ibaka, who had 22 points in the last game, if you remember starting out game one, he was one of eight from the floor in that game, Dick, and he shot a lot of jump shots. And then Scott Brooks told us, you know, he's probably our best mid-range jump shooter. So he came back with two good games shooting the ball, but again tonight he's settling for that jump shot instead of that dirty work on the inside. Fourth team foul on OKC, and Gallinari looking to put the Nuggets in front. Can't do it. It remains tied at 55, and the free throw shooting for Denver is 63% below what they accomplished in the last game when they didn't shoot well from the line. Durant with a quick three. He's got it. Kevin Durant with his second three of the game and now has 15 points, breaks the tie. Nene in against Perkins. Hard off the glass. And we'll take a break. Nene with another opportunity inside. Timeout. Go back and look at how Durant winds up getting open. Gallinari runs right into the screen. You can't do that right there. There he is running into the screen. Durant wide open. You leave him open, it's a three. Time for the Cinco Stat of the Night presented by Corona. And uh, five seeds swept in the first round since 1984. And here's who they are right now. And uh, the Denver Nuggets trying to avoid becoming the fifth. So the Thunder bring it up. Capacity crowd here at Pepsi Center. Great sports town is Denver, Colorado. Westbrook. With, guarded by a follow and the interception made by Nene. And let's see if this crowd can get the Nuggets, help the Nuggets win here because they are a force. Gallinari against Durant. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Nene from the baseline. Hits Nene with the field goal, and it's a one-point lead for the Thunder. Gallinari pounded that ball long enough till he eventually got to the middle of the floor. Then he saw the blue jerseys and decided to kick it out to the day. There you see what Durant Westbrook have done in this quarter for the Thunder. And a foul away from the ball as Perkins gets uh, hit on the floor. So we're in Denver. Another look at the foul. That's four on Martin. And Kenya Martin was not going to allow Perkins to post him up deep in the lane. So he'd rather take the foul and give him the ball on the side out. And Al Harrington is going to come in the game. Martin goes out with his four fouls. He has scored 13 points on six for eight shooting. 
And George Carl is just going to try and buy five minutes here in this quarter, and then he'll bring Martin back in and have two fouls to use in the fourth quarter. Under five minutes to go, and Westbrook dribbling in a lot. Gallinari looking ahead, decides to keep it himself, and lays it in. Danilo Gallinari now. Six points, and the Nuggets regain the lead by one. Here is Cephalosha pulling up with it, and he hits. Seesaw game here in the third quarter, Rocky Mountain High here in Denver with Oak City leading and a chance for Denver to take the lead. And here come the Thunder back. And the jumper is good. Field goal by Westbrook now with 17 points. And you know one thing you haven't seen, Dick? You haven't seen very many passes right now. This is going up and down. Here's J.R. Smith coming back with a three. Very tough matchup, and when he's on, J.R. Smith is a great weapon off the bench, tied at 62. Smith with seven, including a three. 3.45 remaining in the third quarter. Crowd screaming for defense, and it's Westbrook. And both teams now dead eye from the perimeter the last several times down the floor. They've almost turned this in, into a one on one competition. Yeah. Who gets it? Ice is up there. You see another. Gall shot. <laughs> Gallinari with a three. This is a shootout. Denver by one, and a timeout called by the Thunder. And the reason he's upset is Denver thought they got a steal before Westbrook called the timeout, but it was really Durant who called it. And you'll see on the inside, the dribble, draw, penetration, find J.R. Smith, who really can shoot threes, and he's has incredible range on his shot. Valinari, he didn't need a pass. He feels that he's got to go just as well. They're attacking from behind the three-point line. Closing out a team is the hardest game in basketball. Uh, they have a lot of pride. We, we respect Denver a lot. Uh, they're not going to just lay down and give us the game. We understand that. So we have to come back with the same mentality uh, of competing on the defensive end, making them miss shots, knowing that it's not going to be an easy crowd to play in front of. We have to manage that uh, and just compete for 48 minutes. Westbrook's field goal gives him 21 points and the, the Thunder lead by one. And that was set up by Kevin Durant running a nice cut off the double screen. Gallinari gets Durant up in the air, does it intentionally three. to draw the foul, and now he'll go to the line. He'll shoot three. And uh, listening to uh, Scott Brooks, so far, only one playoff series has ended. See Gallinari jumping to his right to make sure there is contact between his body and Durant's body. So our three teams have been facing sweeps. The Sixers and the Pacers avoided theirs, but uh, the Celtics did sweep the New York Knicks, and that's what the Thunder are trying to do today as Gallinari misses the first. It's a very difficult game because you know, some teams at that point, Dick, say, look, the season's over. We have no chance of coming back against this team. They just dominated you know, so thoroughly throughout. But as we saw, let's say, in the Indiana series, Every game was close. They knew they could have won any one of those first three games, so they came back with that same type of fight. And look, Doug Collins' team in Philadelphia, you knew they were not going to go away in that fourth game. They, they worked too hard all year to reestablish the pride and the credibility in that program, and Doug was not going to let them do it. And the leaders, Elton Brand, they were not going to let the young guys, you know, just go away easy. They, they wind up stealing one from Miami. And, of course, teams can build on next year. The Pacers certainly can, even if they go down in five. That game is tomorrow night on TNT. Marv Albert and Steve Kerr will be there for that game at Chicago. Here's Collison from Durant. And the tip-in, Ibaka pounding the offensive glass, but the Nate controls. That was another great pass by Durant. He had hit Westbrook with the other one, and that time he found his big man rolling. Harrington and J.R. Smith both... Playing with energy off the bench and a bad pass by Smith. Turns it over. Denver with the one-point lead. And there you see, <laughs> not easy <laughs> for a coach, huh? No, and, and that's just the seventh turnover. And OKC's only picked up three points as a result of Denver's three turnovers. So they really have not hurt themselves there at all. 
Here's a good feed from Durant to Collison, and the basket counts in the foul, and Collison with a chance for the three-point play, and Nene has picked up his fourth. Well, you see Collison show the ball, and Nene leaves his feet. Very fortunate, very fortunate the way he landed that he wasn't injured on that play. So Nene goes to the bench with four, and Kenyon Martin also with four fouls. And Collison on the line. I, I think this has been a pretty interesting performance from Oklahoma City for all this evening. Defensively, they've done enough to keep themselves hanging around. Denver is desperate. They have to win this game before the season's over for them. And yet you look up at the scoreboard, and OKC has a two-point lead. There is Gallinari feeding Chris Anderson, and it's deflected, and another block for Oklahoma City under two minutes to go. And the jumper missed that time by Oklahoma City, and a three-point shot. That doesn't go. This is a jump-shooting game right now. Felton to Harrington, defended in the corner by Ibaka. Remember what Charles said at halftime from the studio show. Sometimes Westbrook gets a little too jump shot happy, and that's what we're seeing now. He made a great defensive play by blocking that shot, but then he came down full speed in transition, pulls up and shoots another jump shot. He's just 8 of 19 from the floor tonight. And I also, I, also, I also think the Nuggets, when they drive inside for layups, are while worrying about the block shot as well. J.R. Smith misses. Anderson fighting for it out of bounds. Last touch by the Thunder. Eric Maynard will come in for o Oklahoma City. Durant doing a good job on Gallinari, who has 11 points in the quarter and a pushing foul inside against Harden. Yeah, Harden tried to block, okay, tried to block the offensive player to the inside, winds up pushing off from behind. You see the bigger player, Anderson, shoved right there. That's what the official called. And the Thunder over the limit, and Chris Anderson First time to the line tonight. Nuggets have missed nine free throws, 14 for 23, 61%. One out of two. Thunder by one, they have the ball, under a minute remaining in the third. Hard try to thread the needle. Nuggets get it. That was Anderson that came across, overloaded the defense of the ball side, and they get the deflection. Gallinari puts it up there, and Anderson fires it out. Here's Smith for three! J.R. Smith, Denver by two, his second three of the game. Can that be a hockey assist? Don't they get like a hockey assist when you Do pass it to the guy that passes it to the other guy Do that assist. scores? Okay. As opposed to the unassisted goal. And the turnover. Scott Brooks can't be happy with what his Thunder are doing here. And the reason that JR wound up getting that shot was because Chris Anderson tipped it all the way to the outside. One pass over, JR Smith gets it off quickly and hits it. Six turnovers for the Thunder here in the third quarter. JR Smith, four of six from the field. And Anderson will go to the bench playing well for the second straight game, replaced by Aplalo. 20 seconds left in the quarter, and Cephalosha will come in for Ibaka now. Ibaka sits down with 10 points and 13 rebounds.
Belton controlling. Playing for the last shot. No team has had a bigger lead than six. That was Denver. Three points by Felton. Rebound, Cephalosha, as the third quarter comes to an end. We were tied at the end of the half. The Nuggets up by two. Trying to hang in there, survive, and send this to a game five in Oklahoma City. 71-69 after three. Like two, and a few moments ago, Pam Oliver caught up with George Carl. Well, George, let me ask you, how does the pace of this team, how does that um, affect your team, the pace of this game? Well, I, I don't think we can we can beat them playing five on five half court offense. I mean, uh, we, we, their defense is protecting the basket, but if we run them, we get holes, we get gaps, and it plays our talents. And I think right now, Ty and Raymond got to get us running. We got to make some stops and hopefully create some offensive defense. Appreciate it. Air ball, thank you, Pam. Air ball and protected by Ty Lawson. So Lawson and Felton are both in there. One second on the 24 second clock, and Ty Lawson. Hits from the corner. Incredible how players have that clock recognition. They've got to know the time and the score. They know when they have to get it up there, how much time they have to ball fake, step to their left, and then get it up in time. And stepping on the line was Daquan Quan Cook turning it over. Watch, there's time's running out. Shoot it now? No. I have time for one dribble left. Let it go. Clock's at zero when he hits it. Great knowledge. And that's the second time now that we've seen a player step out of bounds on the sideline, which has taken away a shot opportunity for Oklahoma City. Smith, Lawson, and Gallinari each with two three-point baskets. Felton fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. So it's Lawson and Felton along with Smith, Anderson and Harrington for the Nuggets. And you may see Scott Brooks take a quick time out here because you can see that Oklahoma City may be losing their concentration a little bit right here in the beginning of the fourth quarter. An eight to nothing run right now. And if Felton connects on this free throw, it'll give the Nuggets their biggest lead of the game. Collison with Maynard, Harden, Ibaka, and Cook. So Westbrook and Durant are on the bench here. And a 9-0 run by the Nuggets. How long will he keep those two on the bench with Denver opening it up here? Here's Daquan Cook for three. Well, if there's no score and you see Denver get another one, you'll see a timeout right away. Lawson all the way in. Foul. And this is right about the time that your assistant coaches lean over to you and say let's get Durant and Westbrook back in <laughs> assistant coaches feel a lot better with those two guys you see Scott Brooks look down to the end of the bench and who's he calling to go in the game uh-oh the two guys that the assistant coaches leaned over and whispered in his ear time to get him back in didn't take long did it and here they come as Durant and Westbrook both check into the game national coverage of the NBA playoff continues Tomorrow night on NBA TV, game five between the Hawks and the Magic. The Hawks can wrap it up in Orlando. That starts at seven. And on TN2 TV, two big ones, Indiana at Chicago, game five. New Orleans at the Lakers, game five. And the nine-point lead, 78-69. to 69. In the opening minutes of this third quarter, it's a kick ball. 11 straight points have been run off by the Denver Nuggets. Been a tight series for most of the games, not all of them. We'll be right back. In the first half, Denver was 2 of 6 from behind the three-point line, but in the second half, J.R. Smith started him off with the long three-pointer. Then Gallinari wanted to get involved in the three-point party. Again, back to J.R. Smith, and then finishing up with Lawson and the shot clock running out. Second half, 5 of 10 from behind the three-point line for the Nuggets, just what the head coach, George Carl, ordered before the game. And sparking the 11-0 run are key threes by Smith and Lawson. Lawson in particular here in this 
fourth quarter. And here is Harden driving in and stuffing it through for the layup. And it's a six-point game. Duggets had opened up a nine-point bowl. Nearly two minutes elapsed. Here's Anderson. Rebound, Cook. Cook in there with Westbrook, Durant, Collison, and Hart. And the basket. And the field goal for the Thunder by Westbrook, who now has 23. You only have one big man out there on the floor for them right now. That's Anderson. If Collison winds up pulling him out away from the basket, then there's nobody to protect the front of the rim. J.R. Smith stops his drive, draws the foul on Cook. Well played by J.R. Smith. And that's what happens when you make a couple three-pointers. They're so anxious to get to you. J.R. thought the game that time. He didn't just play the game. He thought the game. He showed the ball, got the defender up. He knew he had hit a couple threes. They're running at him hard. Now he goes to the line for some easy free throws. And three-team fouls already on the Thunder with 9.40 remaining in this fourth quarter. So they're headed for the penalty early here. Meanwhile, the Nuggets have yet to commit a team foul. Always a major stat I used to look at, how many minutes of bonus penalty time were you able to get, meaning can you get to that bonus situation early in the quarters so you're shooting all those extra free throws? Tonight, the Nuggets are getting solid contributions from Smith, Felton, and Anderson off of the bench, something that the Thunder have received in the first three games of this series. Smith has them both. Seven-point lead for Denver. Free throw percentage has increased for both teams to just 71% and 70, respectively. Here's Durant against Anderson defending. Basket counts and a foul. Kevin Durant with a chance for the three-point play and Harrington with the first one. I can't even describe how tough this shot is. Watch, that's Anderson next to him. Here comes Harrington up. He's off balance, falling to the left, and makes this jump shot. This is an incredible shot. His legs are spread, but he keeps his concentration and eyes on the rim to make that one get fouled and now a chance to finish the three-point play. Only the 11th player in NBA history to lead the league in scoring in back-to-back -back years was Durant, Gallinari has come in the game. And Harrington goes to the bench. Two and a half gone by in the fourth. The lead is four for the Nuggets. And the reason Gallinari's back in is because George Carl has felt all along that Gallinari has done a good de defensive job on Durant. Here is Lawson getting a piece of it is Hart. And Lawson gets the ball back. Five on the shot clock. Here is J.R. Smith, fall away, batted out. Second time the Nuggets have batted out a rebound for a new possession. Here's Lawson, driving in against Collison. Lawson now with 21 points. That's his high in this series. You saw that matchup. Lawson was being defended on the outside by Durant. He knows that it's tougher to shoot him over Durant, so he drives it by him. Nuggets shooting 38%, yet in front by six. Harden will inbound. Got Collison, Durant, Cook, and Westbrook with the ball. Westbrook fires it up. And here come the Nuggets. Felton, working against Cook, nearly lost it. Fortunate there that he didn't have it knocked away or committed a violation. Five on the shot clock. Gallinari fires it up. Great defense by Harden on Gallinari. Nuggets will get it back. And the three missed by J.R. Smith. They had chances. Here's Harden driving in, and he's fouled. Sometimes you get a little bit excited because of your effort. J.R. Smith came up with the offensive rebound, then ran to the corner and hoisted one up. Perhaps a couple passes around would have produced a higher percentage shot. Chris Anderson with the foul. And Harden will go to the free throw line. James Harden in his second year from Arizona State. Big factor off the bench in games two and three. 
third overall pick in the 2009 draft. There you see the last 11 playoff games for the Nuggets. They're just two and nine in those games. Look at the minus 67 in points and rebounds and assists. Okay, you see those second chance points? That's a lot of effort right there. And now the Nuggets have had a slight effort in that department in this game. Four point lead after Harden made both. Lawson picked up by Durant. Lawson spinning his way in, tries a tough shot to get fouled and succeeds. He got pushed. Sometimes small guards get themselves in the paint and get under the rim and in the middle of all those big bodies, and they've got to figure out what are they going to do with it from there. If they don't have any outlet passes, it's tough for them to get a good shot off at the rim. That's the fourth foul on Durant. And the first Thunder player to pick up four. Martin and Nene each with four for the Nuggets. And Lawson perfect from the line. Now six for six. Nene playing with the four fouls will come in for Chris Anderson gets a hand as he leaves the game solid off the bench Yeah, not only did he block shots he protected the front of the rims and with his effort he got his team back second shot opportunities just by knocking the ball back out well the point guards Lawson and Felton and remember Kenny Smith in halftime talking about the effectiveness of these point guards, not that they're both from North Carolina, that doesn't have anything to do with no, it for Kenny, I'm sure. Kenny would never think about that. <laughs> Denver has made its last nine free throws after a slow start at the line, up by six. Wait for Kenny to walk through his big board there in the studio and have his Carolina shorts on. I, I missed the big board at halftime. And Durant fighting not to lose the ball, out of bounds, goes over to the Nuggets. Good double team on... Durant. Yeah, I like what I see. I like what I see. Westbrook running over there. Remember, those are the two guys that were having a problem with each other. Westbrook ran right over and picked up his teammate. From the corner, J.R. Smith plays to the crowd, hitting his third three of the game. Timeout, Oklahoma City. Matching their biggest lead of the game, nine for the Nuggets. Neymar Smith from early on this season felt that he had his three-point shot going, goes right to his corner spot, and his teammate finds him. Guys, we got a lot of time left. We got a lot of time. We don't need home runs. We just need solid basketball plays. Hit singles. Hit singles for each other. We got to get stopped. What Scott Brooks is saying by hit singles, he means make simple plays. We'll take two points at a time like that one right there by Westbrook, and we'll get ourselves back in this game again. Don't try and do spectacular things because time is running out. That's not the case. We've got seven minutes remaining basically in the game. 25 for Westbrook. He had 31 in the first game of the series. The lead is eight. Felton, and it's still Felton and Lawson. The two point guards have been playing a lot together in the second half. Felt pulls up, misses the jumper, and Harden the rebound, and he's fouled by Tyson. You see, that's one of the few times, Dick, that Felton well, tried to shoot the jump shot over the top of Durant. When Durant switched on to him that time, instead of going by him the way Lawson was doing, and obviously that length affected the jump shot. Correction, that was Lawson, and he picks up his fourth foul and the 13th foul. Next foul against the Thunder will put them over the limit. Durant fires quickly for three. And Durant now with 21, he's hit three from beyond the arc. Talk about knowing your teammates. Harden had that shot. He could have taken that shot very easily. What did he do? He made one more pass and got it to Durant. So now it's down to a four-point game. The last five points scored by Westbrook and Durant. And let's see how the Nuggets answer. Looking to stay alive with under six minutes to play in the fourth. Gallinari shooting over Harden and hits. Gallinari, 13 points. He had 11 in the third quarter. And a six-point edge for the Nuggets. Denver ran the pick and roll. They got the switch, and Gallinari wound up shooting it over a smaller Harden. 
Gallinari defending Durant going to the hoop, stripped away, and they'll call the foul. And George Carl thought it was a smooth defensive play. Watch that pass into the post, turn and look opposite, and then Harden passes it up to get it to the league's leading scorer and his teammate Durant to get him a three. Kendrick Perkins getting set to come into the game. Harden is on the line for Durant with 21 points, six of seven from the line. So it was Perkins coming in and Daquan Cook leaving the game. Here's a look at the series schedule. If the Nuggets can survive tonight, next game would be Wednesday at Oklahoma City on TNT. Nuggets by four, under five and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Gallinari picked up by Durant. Here's Nene, who has four fouls. He's bottled up. Good defense by the Thunder with six on the shot clock. J.R. Smith fires Westbrook over Nene, getting the rebound. Westbrook picked up by Smith. And a chance to cut the lead to two or one if they hit the three. Smith guarding Westbrook. Long rebound. Westbrook comes up with it. That's where you have to keep your concentration. J.R. Smith was satisfied with him missing the jumper, but never put a body on him to block him out. And here's Durant. Strong to the hoop. And the foul. So Durant will go to the line. And it's been the Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook show here. Once the Thunder were down by as many as nine points, that foul will be against Smith, his second. And that's the fifth team foul against Denver. So they did not commit a team foul for a while, and now they're in the penalty first. And that's why we saw George Carl when that play took place. George was watching it, and all of a sudden just went back, sat back down again, very frustrated with the fact that they fouled and fouled and fouled and now giving away easy points to OKC. 25 for Durant at a career playoff high of 41 in the series opener. Strong to the basket is Ty Lawson. Just knifed his way through and Lawson with 25 points matches Durant for the game high scoring lead. Nuggets by four. And the offensive foul, charge is called against Westbrook. You'll see right here, good job by Lawson, moving his feet and getting in front of Westbrook. Anticipates, there's Westbrook lowering that shoulder. And wasn't it Pam that told us earlier that listening to George Carl, he said, guys, get ready, because this is probably going to get down to the end of the game in the fourth quarter, and here we are. And George has been in enough of these series and certainly enough of these series when he's been trailing three nothing third foul on Westbrook Gallinari playing cat and mouse puts it up over Durant and hits Gallinari now with 15 all in the second half six point lead for the Nuggets he has come alive offensively for George Carlton. I'd say, yeah, it wasn't a little while ago. We said he had no points as Durant misses the three, and we see them come right back with the second shot opportunity coming up here. It's Westbrook. Smith defending. Westbrook strong, but hard off the glass. Westbrook a little frustrated that time. He didn't go in to make that one. He went in there to get fouled. Gallinari for three. The lead again is nine. When we said he had no points. Suddenly he starts to feel it. Goes one on one, steps back, hits a two, and then give him the opportunity by himself behind the three point line. You know he's making it. He's on fire.
coming in full force here in game number four, hoping that this isn't the last game of this series. And a nine-point lead matching the biggest of the game for the Nuggets. They have outscored the Thunder seven to nothing. Five points coming from Gallinari. And those guards, Melton and Ty Lawson. Lawson's 25. It's a career playoff high for him. Three minutes remaining in regulation. Both teams in the penalty. Westbrook. And the follow-up by Perkins. No foul. Perkins still down the other end of the floor. And you see Nene taking advantage of it, running the floor hard. As Perkins laid there, wanting to know why he didn't get a foul call. Then they realized it and just sprinted down the floor. Meanwhile, Durant has picked up his fifth foul. And things are looking rosy right now for the Nuggets. They even brought Kenyon Martin back into the game. Timeout. 2.44 remaining in the fourth. Keep attacking, White. Do not stop. Settle. A great offensive rebound, but don't settle. Find a good shot. Don't take the bad shot. Let's go. George Carl trying to give his team words of wisdom to finish this game off. And Nene on the free throw line. He's two for five. Denver has had recent runs of 11 to nothing and now 7 to nothing with Gallinari, Lawson, and Smith making key hoops, particularly with the shot clock running down. Nene looking to give the Nuggets a 10-point lead, and he does. First double-digit lead of the game, and it comes with 2.44 left in the fourth. Well, there's still plenty of time. It's not like OKC can't pull this one out because they are a three-point shooting team. They can make them with range, but they've got to hit a couple long J's and get some stops. Ibaka fouled by Kenyon Martin, and that'll be five on Martin. We had mentioned that Durant has picked up five fouls. And Ibaka will go to the line. Tonight he's two for two. Has another double-double, 10 points and 13 rebounds and five blocks of the nine that the Thunder have swatted tonight. Well, that's a good thing for the Thunder, the fact that he gets a chance to put points on the board. The clock has stopped, so that's exactly what they need to get back in the game, but then they've got to make their free throw attempts. Now 22 of 29 from the line, good for 76%. Thunder had hit their previous three, 13 I should say. And he makes one out of two. So it's a nine point game, 233 remaining. Martin setting the screen. Westbrook stays with Lawson. Don't settle. You remember what George Carl said, but they turn it over. And here comes the Thunder and Westbrook getting the layup and the foul and a chance for the three-point play as Westbrook makes a solid drive. Remember, possession of the ball is so important. This is just as good as getting behind the three-point line and knocking one down. Attack the rim, score the layup, and now go to the line and finish the three-point play. The turnover being the key thing right there. Denver turning it over doesn't use up any time off the clock. They don't get a shot at the basket. And he gets the three-point play. So now Nene, along with Kenyon Martin, have five fouls. 28 points for Westbrook. And you're in a six-point game with two minutes remaining. Lawson. Inside to Nene. Fouled by Perkins. And once again, Nene will go to the line, but you got to remember he is three for seven from the line in this game. And 154 on the clock. And the lead is six. See, L Lene had, uh, rather Perkins, had paid so much attention to the dribbler that his teammate Ibaka has to cover for him on that back line, which he did not do that time. Durant with five for 
the Thunder. Nene and Martin have five as Nene makes the free throw, and they're going to bring Raymond Felton into the game. J.R. Smith goes out. Smith with 15 points has hit three from downtown tonight. And the crowd appreciative of the fact that he kind of ignited this team with his first three-point shot. Nene, one out of two from the line. Seven-point lead. So now let's see how the Nugget defense shapes up against the duo of Westbrook and Durant. Let's not forget Ibaka, who hits the jumper. And Oklahoma City, very cool here, down by five. There's plenty of time left. The first thing they have to do is get the stop and then push in transition to see if something opens up easy for them. Minute and a half. Now 10 on the shot clock. Durant all over Gallinari. Now picked up by Perkins. Looking for the foul. It was deflected. Perkins with a good defensive play. And now here come the Thunder again. Here's Durant for three. Kevin Durant with a three-pointer. And it's a two-point lead for the Nuggets. It's almost incredible that you could see Durant standing by himself. No one pushed out to him. They threw that across court to get it to him. 28 points and four three-point baskets for Durant. Under a minute to go. Here is Felton from outside. Air ball. No foul. And now the Thunder could tie it up, and a three would give them the lead. You notice neither coach called the timeout in a very critical situation. George Carl played through it, and now we see Scott Brooks playing through it without taking a timeout. Durant played by Felton. There's the timeout story. And the three missed by Westbrook. And now Felton indicates there's not enough time, and they have to foul with 23.2. Down by two, and critical free throws coming up the rest of the way. Yeah, you couldn't let that run out. Three-second differential is not enough there, so you've got to go ahead and take that foul, and now what you're going to bank on it, you're hoping they miss at least one of the two to make it a one-possession game, and then Oklahoma will take a timeout most likely and set up a play by Scott Brooks. Belton is two of three from the line. He has scored seven points tonight. And a successful free throw here would make this a two-possession game. Nuggets trying to hold on, avoid a sweep, and force a game five. He's got them both. 100 to 96. And a timeout coming up. gets a full at 220 down by four 23.2 what are you looking at well, right now I want to get a quick score you don't have to shoot a three here you get a two you're gonna foul immediately make Denver go back down the other end of the floor make both of their foul shots then you've got another timeout if you're okay see to advance it once again but the important thing here is that you go quickly you get a good shot try to attack the rim if they collapse of course you'll take the three Harden will inbound to Westbrook Here's Durant, and Kenyon Martin defending him. Here's Westbrook with the drive, lays it in. And they got the two they needed, down by a pair, and they're going to foul right here. And they foul Felton again, who will go to the line. There's your quick attack. First is a draw kick, and now Gallinari, no speed to match Westbrook. Westbrook goes right to the rim. Nobody got near him to give him a three-point play. And now you play it out with having to make the fouls and then get the opportunity back. So 30 points for Westbrook and 58 combined between Westbrook and Durant. And Felton, who just made two critical free throws, has to do it again. He's four for five. 73% in the playoffs. So now, even with a successful free throw, it would be a one-possession game with a little more than 15 seconds. And for the regular season, he's just a 62% free throw shooter. So it was the right guy to foul. One out of two, and a three-point game, and a timeout. And right now, Perkins and Nene had a little slight 
shoving match going on. And Perkins still sitting on the floor. Perkins wants to know why a foul's not called. You see them blocking out on the inside. They get tied up right there, and then Nene uses that arm bar to put them back down on the floor. And you know what the officials want? They just want this to go away at that moment. They don't want to have to put a point on the board with a technical. So no timeout called. And now three-point deficit is in the hands of Westbrook. And Westbrook firing a three, fires up an air ball. Westbrook misses the three, and 6.5 left. Here Westbrook comes down in transition and just elevates, and he's about a foot short on the shot. And a timeout called. Kenyon Martin unable to get the ball inbounds. And a timeout. And Denver will have one full and 120 left. Westbrook misfires. Three-point game for Denver. Wow. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's easy to look back, but after the game, I would think Scott Brooks and his staff will talk this over. They had two opportunities to take timeouts. Both times he elected to play in transition. It just hasn't worked out for him that way. And you know, a foul will be coming up. Martin looking to inbound. Time running out, and there's the foul. As Lawson will go to the line to shoot. Three-point lead. So Lawson, who is a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven from the line. And coming into the game was 9-for-9. Nine nine. In fact, uh, you know, when you're perfect, you've got to be at the top of the playoff league in free throw shooting. So he is 16-for-16 16 16 in the playoffs. So Martin inbounded the ball to the right guy, apparently. Remember, the Thunder still have that timeout left. Notice Scott Brooks took Perkins out of the game. Probably a, a pretty darn good move. He was so upset at no foul being called when then they threw him to the ground. They, don't, they want to make sure he's not suspended for the next game, so they pulled him out of the game and make him sit there on the side. Two big free throws by Lawson. It's a five-point game, and now Scott Brooks... And the Thunder call their final timeout of the game. The Nuggets are on the brink of surviving for another game. Producer Tom Heights, director Renardo Lowe, and our statistician Marty Aronoff. Five point game. Little over six seconds left. The timeout came now, but I think they'll go back and question as we see Durant hit that three, and that was my point before about taking that timeout when they were down three rather than get the transition air ball by Westbrook. You got a guy like Durant, if you set a play up and get him four inches, he's likely to make it. Now, you talk about the youth of a team. Sometimes they're a little impatient. Westbrook might have been there. Timeout called for by the Nuggets with 4.1. the ball no waste of time OKC has to foul immediately when Denver catches the ball Martin will inbound And Felton is fouled immediately by Westbrook. So 3.5 seconds, but the key here is that the Thunder do not have any more timeouts remaining. And two free throws should ice this game. Felton is 5 for 7 from the line. Nuggets still have a 20. And remember, in that last timeout, Scott Brooks had to draw up what play he wants them to run after the second free throw. They have no more timeouts left to advance it. There's the miss that they're hoping for. So even if he makes it, it's still a one possession game and they've got three and a half seconds to get it in, get it up, and he has drawn something up in transition to get a shot off. And Durant, Westbrook, Ibaka along 
with Harden and Collison are the five in there for the Thunder. One out of two. 104-101. Time running out. Here is Westbrook. Fires it up and misses. And the game is over. And the Nuggets survive. Here's the push, and right there, Westbrook felt that he had gotten fouled that time as Kenyon Martin ran by him, turned to the official and said, you got to call the foul. There's no call there. And the Nuggets avoid a sweep, just as the 76ers and the Pacers have. And the final score, Denver 104, Oklahoma City 101. Thunder leads the series 3-1, to one, and we'll go back to Oklahoma City on Wednesday for a Game 5. And let's go over to Pam Oliver, who's with Ty Lawson. Well, Ty, you guys really clawed your way through this one. What kind of confidence builder is this for you? This is big. You know, we got our first win of the series, and now we're just going to keep building upon it. Go down there and play a tough game and try to get another win. What do you feel best about as far as this team's effort tonight? Just how everybody's tough mind and everybody's heart. You've seen it out here tonight, man. Everybody's playing hard. And everybody wanted to get after it, so we need that next game, too. George used the word hard. Taking a piece of theirs, you felt like you did that? Yeah, I think so. You know, this is a closeout game, so now they got a day or two to think about it and uh, try to re-strategize, and um, we're going to take it to them. Congrats. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Back to you. Lawson with a playoff career high, 27 points, and our final score once again, the Nuggets 104, the Thunder 101. Coming up next, it's Inside the NBA. For Mike Fratello, Pam Oliver, and the rest of the crew, I'm Dick Stockton saying goodnight from Denver. You've been watching the NBA playoffs on TNT, exclusive home of the 2011 NBA Eastern Conference Finals. Right now, let's send it to Ernie Johnson in Atlanta.